देवी और सज्जनों नमस्कार सीएमए को आगे बढ़ाते हुए अब हम बात करेंगे ओबेसिटी की यानी मोटापे की जो किसी समय एफ्लुएंट क्लासेस की निशानी थी पर आज के दौर में मोटापा इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ डिजीज एंड इट एक्ट्स एज अ कंट्रीब्यूटरी फैक्टर टू मैनी अदर डिजीजेस टू एनहेंस our knowledge in the management of obesity we have three stalwarts who will speak on medical management surgical management and endoscopic management but before i invite the first speaker i along with my co-chair persons will like to thank and congratulate the office bearers and the organizing committee of ama for giving us an opportunity to chair this obesity symposium a big round of applause please for them now i'll ask my coach a person to introduce our first speaker dr naval kishor vikram over to us uh good morning everybody i uh, i would like to invite professor naval kishor vikram he is professor and depart in the department of medicine and associate dean exams all indian institute of medical sciences new delhi he has published various papers in national and international journals and he is a keen researcher and a interest especially in the metabolic diseases and i am lucky that he was my senior at the all india institute of medicine uh, medical sciences for 6 years and i have learned a lot about diabetes and medical metabolic diseases from him and his team so dr navel please it's it's a great feeling to be at the place of your birth after several decades i was born here but i have never been here for more than 4 decades and i thank uh, ama for inviting me here and uh, it's, a, it's it's a real pleasure so uh we have uh, in this session various modalities so i'll pitch in my uh, pitch in the pharmacological management uh so obesity is a weighty problem we all know and uh, one in four indians is obese that is clear from the nfhs data which was NFH, nfhs 5 data which shows uh one in four indians is obese and uh, not only the urban and rural areas and everywhere in in childhood also uh, the problem is increasing continuously now obesity if it was a simple thing energy in energy out life would be very easy but it's not it's a it's a, uh, a problem or a disease it's actually a chronic progressive and a complex disease let me put it that way which is Uh, affected by several factors right from the genes to the environment to the psychological factors behavior diet the gut now the gut microbiota is the new thing and there are so many things so it is a complex interplay of various factors which leads to the development or genesis of obesity and that is the reason the treatment also is has to be a complex or a mixture of several things only single uh, single uh, approach is not useful now before we go on to um, know how to treat it we should know what causes obesity so what is the pathogenesis here you know so the several uh, uh, messages are there which go to the brain which guide brain to increase the appetite on the other hand there are other factors which guide the brain to decrease the appetite so there is a whole whole lot of controllers of appetite which are having an interplay here and there is gut also so now we exploit the the recent treatment or the pharmacological man, uh, de development of pharmacological agents has been in this area somehow you suppress the uh, orexigenic hormones and increase the anorexigenic hormones or in the gut you decrease the absorption of the nutrients right so this is something uh, one would like to know before and this is the appetite regulation as i mentioned okay. 
so here is the anorexogenic signals and this is the orexogenic signals where signals are originating from the various organs this is the hemostatic pathway which is the conventional hemostatic pathway on the other hand you have the non hemostatic reward pathway and the hedonic pathway that itself is the another path another uh, system which ap regulates the appetite so one has to take care of both the things now benefits we all very well know what are the benefits of weight loss there are whole lot of benefits so i'm not going to go into details of this how much weight loss should be realistic that is the most important thing once you start treating obesity what should be the realistic weight loss one should not try to uh, have uh, goals which are not achievable number 1 that makes the patient uh, uh, feel helpless and uh, that makes the patient feel that i just can't do it that is the first defeat that is in your management so it has it has to be realistic it has to be achievable and it has to be maintainable maintaining is most important people can lose weight quickly within a month or two people can lose 8 to 10 kg that's all right but maintaining that is the most important problem and that is uh, where many of these drugs come in so management i'll be pitching the pharmacological therapies this is the treatment options that we have as per the indian guidelines so pharmacological pharmacological managements are recommended from individuals with bmi more than 27 onwards 27 to 29.9 with comorbidities more than that without comorbidities the pharmacological management is indicated should be prescribed now there may be some revisions with the i mean the obesity guidelines are being revised so probably there may be some revision here now why pharmacotherapy is important because lifestyle diet and exercise they are the cornerstone but they fail or they limit the weight loss after a certain time because of the metabolic adaptations of the body now when the metabolic adaptations kick in these are uh, these uh, approaches they become less and less effective so that there is a role of pharmacotherapy which is needed at that uh, point and in fact the various complications which are arising out of obesity also can be managed now this is the timeline of development of anti obesity drugs and as we can see um, several drugs were introduced into the market the red ones were subsequently withdrawn from the market and uh, these are the drugs this is the phenytoramine used for are still available in the western countries for a short duration about 3 months or so and these are the combinations which are available but uh, uh, they have been approved but not available in our country so here what we have is good old orlistat liraglutide although the drug approved for obesity management is for uh, uh, liraglutide 3 mg is not available in india and it's not unlikely to come to india the new kid on the block is simaglutide still available in india on oral form only for management of diabetes not approved for treatment of obesity although being used as an off label and injectable form is also approved and the latest being tirzepatide which is approved for management of obesity again it may take a few years to come to india so as i as i mentioned there are drugs which are acting on the central nervous system and the drugs which are acting on the gastrointestinal tract now the efficacy of various approaches as you see here the diet and lifestyle which is the you look ahead trial uh, was the one which gave us that with a strict intensive diet and lifestyle changes very intensive changes one can have weight loss up to about 3 to 10% and which again over a period of time it plateaus or the weight loss uh, reduces so look ahead was the only trial which has shown intensive lifestyle can work subsequently other di other uh, forms of uh, interventions also can lead to up to 10% or so available pharmacotherapy may be uh, uh, earlier ones only stat etc they can lead to a weight loss up to about 
7 or 8 to 15 percent. On the other hand, the interventions like endoscopic interventions, which you'll be hearing soon, and the surgical interventions, they can lead to a weight loss of more than 25 percent, or maybe some studies have shown up to 40 percent. So, what is there? This is the target which is achieved by your lifestyle. This is the uh, weight loss achieved by the interventions, uh, maybe endoscopic or surgical interventions. Now, this is the gap. How do we fill this gap? That is where the new drugs come in. And these are the pharmacological options. So, we all know about these. I am not going to go into the details. This is the, these are drugs which have been approved and the mechanism of actions. Now, we have to understand the current pharmacological agents exploit the uh, mechanism of incretin, effect of incretin on the body. We have glucagon like peptide, GIP, glucagon. So, how to manipulate this? And this, is, this figure here shows that these three incretins have various effects on other various organs on the body which are beneficial which not only lead to weight loss which lead to metabolic benefits which lead to decrease in the other cardio other risk factors as well so this here shows and these effects are being exploited in the uh, in developing new pharmacological agents let, uh, liraglutide was the earlier one, 3 mg of liraglutide saxinda which was, uh, uh, which was approved and uh, it hasn't come to India but that showed a fairly good uh, weight reduction. Semaglutide, the new talked about drug, the uh, injectable form and uh, it is, it is, its use is rampant, abuse is rampant I would say in the western world. It is being used by for cosmetic benefits as well and whole lot of things. In India, we have uh, an oral form which is still uh, 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 approved only for treatment of diabetes. So, semaglutide is a GLP-1. It acts on the various parts of the brain and it, apart from weight loss, it has several other benefits as well. It uh, Reducing energy intake, reduces body weight, other metabolic benefits are also there. And this is the summary of weight loss trials using semaglutide, the various step trials, there are step 1 to step 4 trials and across these trials we see that up to almost about 18-19% weight loss was observed with the injectable form of this drug. Now the other benefits, as I said, it improves the glucose metabolism, it improves the cardiovascular risk factors as well as decreases the body fat and abdominal visceral fat that also has been shown in uh, the studies. So just beyond weight loss, it has several other benefits as well. As well as it has a safe, uh, acceptable safety profile. The only main adverse effect is nausea and vomiting, which starts in the initial weeks, it may be there, but over a period of time, it subsides. Other diarrhea, vomiting or constipation are there, but they are not so severe so as to lead to a uh, prolonged uh, or a discontinuation of the drug, but they may uh, be there early and then they subside later on. I think that is the most important thing when we are starting the patient on this treatment, uh, one should tell them. So, with the uh, semaglutide, success of semaglutide, now there are showstopper obesity drugs which were introduced gradually. Be, uh, exploiting the ag agonism at gluc glucagon, uh, uh, GLP-1 receptor, at uh, GIP as well as glucagon receptor. So, exploit, so this exploitation of these receptors or agonists at these, these receptors was tried and the drugs were developed. This is a, the dual agonist, the GIP, GLP-1 agonists. Uh, the first is terzipatide which is already out in the market and approved for use. And uh, we were also, our, our uh, institute was also a part, we were also a part of the 
study uh, which was uh, published and uh, we contributed a small number of patients there. And uh, this showed significant weight loss, much more than semaglutide. Now this is a novel agonist at both the receptors, single molecule possessing activity at, uh, at two pharmacological targets. And you would recall the previous uh, diagram that I showed, that gives a more number of benefits. This was a surmount trial which was um, done and uh, what was seen here is that about more than 20% uh, weight loss was observed with this drug. Now the taking it further, uh, drugs with agonism at the three receptors, GLP-1, GIP as well as glucagon have been developed and we have heard about uh, the uh, first drug is the retatutride which was uh, recently the study was uh, showcased in, uh, the, in the US. This is a triple agonist which has shown weight loss of more than 25% reaching the levels of what one could reach with the endoscopic procedures or even uh, bariatric procedures. So this drug has the potential to uh, lead to similar degree of weight loss. However, this was a phase 2 study. Further human trials are uh, going on and I think this uh, India also this trial is going on and we are also a part of this uh, study. Another approach is this is a semaglutide with a amylin analog, cagrilinitide, which is already being used now combining two approaches, GLP-1 as well as amylin analogs combining two, both of them lead to weight loss alone on their own when you combine that it has a potential to provide additional weight loss without compromising the tolerability because of the two different areas that they are acting so cagri sima is the drug which is undergoing trials and we hope to get the results pretty soon and um, it has uh, so far shown promise, but let's see what the detailed results uh, come back to us. This is the uh, study of phase 1b trial. You see here the result that the about, uh, weight loss about 17 to 18 percent was seen. Now the uh, GLP-1 and glucagon agonism. So this is just using these two receptors, the drugs, these are being investigated in phase 1 and phase 2. The data about this is not out as yet. So let us see what how this approach helps. Now there are several other uh, medications which are being uh, uh, tried for the management of obesity because this is a major problem all over the world and uh, there are several uh, like GIP, receptor agonists alone, glucagon, analogs, leptin sensitizers, etc, etc. And even a anti-obesity vaccine which is targeting ghrelin. Ghrelin is the one uh, which uh, the, the, the hormone which increases the appetite. So some vaccine also is being developed under trial against ghrelin. Probably that, uh, let's see, but the results of these are yet not out. So what are the factors which predict the weight loss with these drugs? So whatever drugs you are prescribing, you have to be aware that what is the patient profile and what drug would be the most appropriate in that situation. Now if there is intense food craving, the drugs like phenytoramine, topiramate or the naltrexone, bupropion combination, of course we, do, we don't have those available with us, but topiramate alone can be used in these uh, patients. Phenytoramine we don't have available with us but topiramate we can use in these patients and we have been using and that has shown good results. In individuals who have coexisting depression, although naltrexone, bupropion would be the best combination but since it's not available the other alternative would be to use the antidepressant drugs which don't have the weight gain potential or which do not lead to weight gain. That is something very important here. Eating disorders, again, topiramate could be an alternative instead of the combination that can be used. 
well in pre diabetes or even individuals with diabetes the glp1 analogs whatever we have may be used and individuals who have high fat intake inhibiting the pancreatic lipase with orally stat would be the best approach in them so this is just a guide to um, choose the appropriate drug in whatever setting or whatever is the predominant problem with the patient you have to identify what is causing obesity in one individual and whatever is the predominant problem one may like to target that in addition to other lifestyle factors so in summary obesity is a heterogeneous disorder with several neuro behavior and endocrine factors which regulate that it's not a easy it's a complex problem lifestyle though remains the cornerstone there is a limit that it can achieve and there is also with the metabolic adaptations the changes stop happening or they plateau out pharmacotherapies which combine the weight loss efficacy long term safety and weight loss maintenance they are important and now what we have in our armamentarium glp1 receptor agonist single receptor dual receptor agonist which we have they have been proven to be useful they are safe and also they have been shown to maintain the weight loss over a long period of time safety wise there is a concern there was a recent article in jama a few days back that the use of glp1 and uh, receptor analog was associated with more complications as compared to uh, naltrexone bupropion combination again pancreatitis was there and uh, 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 gastroparesis was there but again that these are the adverse effects of these drugs which one has to tell the patient before you are starting that these are the adverse effects these are the possibilities which can happen that doesn't mean you stop using these drugs because these the benefits outweigh the risks associated with it that is the every drug has an adverse effect but the benefit one has to see or the risk so what our benefit outweighs the risk you use the drug right and newer drugs are being developed more and more trials are coming and the only thing i can hope is that whatever these newer drugs are there and uh, they come to our country where we have limited availability of anti obesity drugs and hopefully they should be affordable by the masses with that i would like to just end my uh, talk thank you very much uh, most of the physicians are they uh, confront the obesity on a daily basis and as no drug is available pharmacologically except for seem that nobody is practicing oral semaglutide because of its cost and so many factors about the topiramate alone so what is the dosage or uh, how is your experience how uh, given the drug that uh, we are using is orally stat very frequently because that is one easily available relatively uh, safe less cost actually most of the indians they have a rich carbohydrate not rich fat diet so i think it doesn't so work what i didn't mention there was that it, there is uh, some data that a combination of orally stat along with acarpos to combine 100 mg uh, uh, 120 mg of orally stat along with 50 mg of acarpos three times in a day before the meals so it it this approach tackles two uh, factors one absorption of fat second one is absorption of carbohydrate so that has been shown there are a uh, few studies randomized trials also have been there it has shown a better improvement than orally stat alone and we have used in uh, some patients and we have also seen that this approach is better and of course this is a off label use of acarbos since it's in approved only for use of uh, use in patients with diabetes it's an off label use the second one is the semaglutide in fact we were using liraglutide whoever was able to But to be afford. precise sir about topiramate alone to ha uh, topiramate is that we are using that in uh, uh, selected patients uh, and we start with the dose of say 50 mg and we go up tight rate to about 100 mg uh, a day but that can uh, lead to weight loss but one has to be careful about its adverse effects and one of the most important or one of the important adverse effects that needs to be monitored is the intraocular pressure
I mean, any patient who has a history of uh, raised IOP or glaucoma or is at risk of developing, that patient should be avoided. Uh, topiramate should be avoided in that patient and frequent examination for IOP, uh, I would suggest that would be uh, safer to uh, have more complications.